God's word is the light of life. It is powerful. It's the glory and truth for our spirit. Open your heart and mind as you receive truth and inspiration of God's word that will change your life forever. As God's servant, Pastor Chooks Etty, the lead pastor of Doxa Life International Church, leads you into a life of limitless possibilities. Father, we ask that you will quicken your word in our hearts. Let the entrance of your word bring forth light. Thou will lighten our darkness. Today, by the reason of your light, let there be no trace of darkness, even in our lives, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. I said, in Jesus' precious name, we pray. And amen. amen. Glory to God. Now, turn your Bibles with me to Acts chapter 17. I read from verse... Okay, before we read Acts 17, let's read Genesis chapter 18. I'd like you to follow me critically because... We're still on the subject, discerning your season. Okay, sorry. I think we're going to do it this way. Let's, let's do the Acts 17 before we come to Genesis. Genesis chapter 18. Let's do Acts. Very important. From 22, let's read... Can you rise up on your feet with me as we read? Rise up on your feet quickly. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mass Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. Whom, we're not done with that other, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. God that made the heaven and all the things therein, seeing that his Lord of heaven and earth dwelleth not in temples made with hands. 25. Neither is worship with men's hand, hands as though he needed anything. Seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. Can you see what he has given to us? And he has made of one, of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth. I have determined the times. That's, that's what I want us to do. Has determined what? The times. Before appointed. And the bounds of their inhabitation. 27. That they should seek the Lord. If happily they might feel after him. And find him. Though he be not far from every one of us. 28. For in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of your own poets have said. For we are also his offspring. Now give us verse 26. And you may be seated. Seated. Okay. Now he said, and he made of... Now, where I want us to focus on is this. He determined the times before what? Appointed. Who determines the appointed time? Who, does, who determines the appointed time? God. Very important. I'm going to come back to that. And another thing again about this place is this. God also, the bounds of their habitation. So that means God determines the appointed time and also determines where people are supposed to live. 
just in case you are not aware. So it is your responsibility to find out where God wants you to stay part time. Because he's the one that allocates our what? Inhabitations. But that's not our subject for today. Where we're focusing on is, give us the amplified. He <laughs> he said, definitely determine their allotted periods of what? Time. And the fixed boundaries of their inhabitations, their settlements, their lands, their abodes. It's God that does all that. So, but we're looking at the issue of the time because we have been on this subject discerning the what? Discerning the what? Uh, discerning your what? Your time. Discerning your season. You know, time will not permit us to do all the recap, but I want to encourage you to get these messages. Very critical. Now, a brother came to me. Let me share this. I think it's a testimony. On Monday, permit me, I'm going to give you the details of the story. I will share it in a way that to hide certain things so that you won't really understand because for security reasons, because it is it's a very serious matter. Now, this brother came to me and said on Monday that after the service on Sunday, they were invited to come somewhere. I said, for security reasons, I'm not going to tell you where the place is. They were invited to come somewhere. He said, usually, he doesn't like attending such meetings. But somehow, the way they were, he was compelled, and then he checked his spirit based on the teaching, you know, because of what we have been teaching, and then he, he, he decided to go along with them to go. And he said, while he was going, he kept praying. He engaged in prayers and was praying. And then when he got there, after everything, they were giving money. They gave them money to share. I told you for some reason, I won't tell you, that you will not understand many things, but just try and understand the word, what you can understand. They were giving money, they shared. And he got his own portion of the money. Nothing serious, but it was 3,000. And he was in need of money. And the Spirit of God told him, don't touch that money. Don't use that money. So, as he got that, you know, you see, at times when God bring, is bringing a teaching, it's because there is, I said there is a season that is upon us. You are going to do yourself a disservice if you don't pay attention to what God is saying part time. So, thank God for that. He was, he was under pressure. He needed money. But he kept that money. When he got home, he kept the money. And you know what happened? Then that night, he had a dream. He had a dream. He said they were by the river, river bank. They had three seats. Then all of a sudden, two of those, one, one of the seats was his. And two of the seats now fell inside the water. Fell inside the water and got drowned and all that. And then he now discovered that his own seat was exchanged to another seat. So it was only his seat that was standing. That was what he saw. So as he woke up, somehow that dream, he linked it up to the money and then he came to my office and shared with me, he said, he's not understanding this thing. I said, okay, the first thing first is that this money that God said you shouldn't touch, don't touch it. He said, yes, that's why he came. In fact, he said he came with the money. He was with the money in my office. So he said, okay, maybe what will happen, okay, maybe he will just give the money to the church. Can I tell you, we needed money that day. That 3,000 would have gone. So he knelt down for me to pray for him. This people of God said, don't touch that money. <laughs> See, you, you, 
you need God to help your heart. If not, money will kill you. You know, it was Dr. Pastor Paul that I heard, he said, look, this, that they said that if you don't reject money, money will not fear you. <laughs> because it don't touch that money. Don't touch it. <laughs> so I prayed for him. I said, God said, I shouldn't touch this money. And I said, see, we need this money now, but God said that we shouldn't do what? You see, you must have a govern over your life. Beyond your feelings, beyond your needs. And that's why we're talking about this being sensitive in the spirit. So I said, okay, now we're not going to collect you. You are not collecting. Just go and give it to modelers, babies. Just find, just... He went. Then he showed up in my office the following day. He was thanking God. And he said that, he, he, that when he, later he heard a story, something that happened the day they went for that meeting. That meeting, that meeting that he went. The day, well, that after that meeting, somebody died in fact, as they finished the meeting, somebody just collapsed and died. That's one. So you're thinking, okay, okay, it's normal. Anybody can die. The person's brother died the same night. He said, these two people, they are all from the same, they are from the same, him with these people, they are from the same place. They're almost from the same place. And those people, their house is close to the river. Are you seeing the connection? <laughs> now the person these two people died they, were, they are br two brothers died the same day one died immediately just while they, they were still there where they went to they hadn't left the place when they finished that was when one collapsed and the other one went home slept and died and didn't wake up so do you, do you know what would have happened to him if he had touched that money So I told him, I said, look, that's one of the reasons why you need to be sensitive because oftentimes you don't even know the enchantments and the incantations that went ahead. You see, that's why you must be sensitive to know per time. We're talking about being able to discern. You know, discernment is the faculty of perception. Your ability to pick signals in the spirit. Now, let me tell you something about, and you need to know why we need to be, to pick signals in the spirit. Life is essentially spiritual. Life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. Life is what? Spiritual. Life is what? Spiritual. I can't say it enough, you see. And that is one of the reasons why you, are, you will be a casualty. If you engage the affairs of this life without being deep spiritually. Now, is it that you are spiritual on the negative side or you are spiritual on the positive side? Life is spiritual. Some of the people you are shaking their hands, you don't know where they are coming from. Anyway, it's not, it's not to make you afraid. Anyway, you know what the Bible says? He said, behold, I give unto you power. To tread on snakes and scorpion. And over all the powers of the enemy. He said nothing shall by any means hurt you. But you see, the segment will help you to know when to sit down. When to stand. When to run. When to run. That you can find in the life of Jesus. When Herod came to kill, the angel came and said, uh, Joseph. <laughs> carry this boy this night and what? And run. Is it that God lacked capacity to defend him? But discernment will help you to know when to what? When to run. There is a time running is part of the game. Is <laughs> But you need to know when to run because you can run at the wrong time at the expense of your destiny. So, you need to be alive spiritually to be able to discern your moment. We said that, the, the, that God is so good that 
none of us, there is nobody that God created in this life that God has created people to be, to, you know, suffer till the time they will die. There is, a, there is a, an allocation of suffering. We understand that. But you see, God is so good that his goodness, the Bible says that the earth is full of what? The goodness of God. Now, but you see, the problem is this. These good things are packaged in seasons. Times and seasons. Times and seasons. So, it is your responsibility to begin to decode those seasons. So that you can assess the things that God has in stock for you. Because when you miss your season, you miss your allotted blessings. When you miss your seasons, you, you saw he's the one. I told us that from the beginning. That God doesn't live in time, but he has set time and season to govern what? The earth. There is something called the appointed time. And when you miss your appointed time, you go what? In circles. You remember the principal scripture that we read concerning the woman who is in labor. That he's in pain because his time has, her time has what? Has come. Discernment is critical. Now give us Genesis chapter 18. Follow me carefully. Now, Genesis 18, and, and, and now the Bible says, and the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. Look at what happened. And he lifted up his eyes and looked and lo, how many men? How many men? Three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself towards the ground. The Bible says the Lord appeared to him. And how did the Lord appear? He appeared where? Appeared like in men, just like a normal person. And he took the same men for Abraham to decode that these people were not ordinary people. Do you know how many times you, have, you would have met God and slapped him? Do you know how many times that God came to help you, you rejected his help? Because you couldn't decode that it was God that came. You saw somebody. You, you saw maybe your, it was your, your friend you were seeing. It was your cousin you were seeing. It was even a stranger you were seeing. Now, let me tell you how critical this. These three men. Now, time will not permit us to read it, but I'll tell you the story. Okay, let's read. He said, my, and he said, my Lord, now. He's calling three men. He saw three men and he began to call them my Lord. If I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Now, Let's, let me give you a picture. I will, I will tell you this and then link it up to 17 before we begin to run. Because, hi, time. Now, when he encountered these three men, he said, Luko, please, can I make a request? If I have found favor in your sight, don't just pass. Come and eat food in my house. Does God eat food? How, how are you saying you saw God and then you are now requesting, God, can I make food for you? You people cannot pass. Let me make food for you people. Then he beckoned on, on the wife, the servant, they prepared things quickly and brought food to those three men. Men. Don't forget where they are men. They are what? They are men. <laughs> because let's follow the one. God said three men. He saw three men. Kai. This is your optical eyes. There is more to life than what this your eyes can see. The real life is the one inside you. The real, the real eyes. No wonder Apostle Paul prayed for me. That's one of the greatest prayers you can find in the Bible. He said that the eyes of your understanding. Do you know understanding has eyes? But some people, they lack understanding. And when you, have, you don't have understanding, forget about the eyes self. That means your understanding needs eyes. It's possible to have understanding and yet the, under, the eyes of your understanding, they are blind. 
And it's another ball game that you don't have. That means you no understand. You don't even have the eyes. Not to talk of the one that is blind. He said that the eyes of your understanding be flooded with what? Light. Do you know, the issue is not that you have eyes. It is actually light that makes you to see. It's the light. The capa- once the eye, eyes it gets into the eyes, it decodes. You're able to see. That's why you can't see in the dark. Is it that you are, okay, you know, a funny story was told about a family, a Nigerian family, they gave birth to their children abroad and all that. They lived there and they came for the first time to Nigeria. And while they were there, Nepa struck in the night. Boom. This student lament, he said, Mommy, I'm blind. Because they can't, it has never occurred to them and they are not aware there is anything like Nepa. So, as they couldn't see in the night, they interpreted it as what? Blindness. He said, I'm blind, I can't see. Don't worry. They are just trying to welcome you to Nigeria. Welcome to Nigeria. Just to announce to you that you have come to Nigeria. <laughs> they're, just, they're just using that to welcome you. So, now, after this man ate this food, what? They say, according to the time of life. <laughs> when they finish eating. You may not understand until I take you to verse 17. He said, according to the time of life. Your wife is going to produce, is going to give birth to a son. Hi. Sarah laughed. Heard that thing and laughed. He said, Kai, these people, I know what is making them to, these tongues they are speaking. Is coming from, is this thing, this thing they ate. She laughed. He said, is, am I going to give birth to a child? After, that's me. In fact, I can't even, there's even, you see, now the issue wasn't just that the woman is experiencing monopause. Now, they didn't even have capacity to meet. At least you meet. You know what he said? He said, will I have pleasure? That means the doing capacity has finished. You don't, okay, don't worry, let me not torment you. Just leave it. Don't ask me too many questions. Don't, that question you're asking in your mind, don't forget it. Just come back home, okay? Now, <laughs> her issue was not that, it was not even the issue of conceiving, you know. This one is that we don't even have capacity to, <laughs> to, <laughs> but <it's, laughs> Would you allow me to hang these young people small? <laughs> There was no capacity to to make love. That capacity has been exhausted since. That was even where she was laughing from. Is it not when you now make love, before you now talk about, would you even say, okay, by this time next year you will make love? (laughs) You people must be dummies. You don't even understand what is going on. Laughed. And God says, ah, Sarah, why did you laugh? He said, I didn't, I didn't laugh. Oh, no, I didn't laugh. Anyway, God didn't press that. If I were to be, you mean you are lying in front of my... <laughs> God didn't press that. God just left, it, left them. Now, but let me tell you this so you can understand. In chapter 17, God came as God. chapter 7, the preceding verse, God came as God and told Abraham, in fact, the Bible says, can you, can you give us that verse 17? He said, and Abraham was 90 years old and 9. Now, this whole thing happened the same year because it was the following year that Abraham gave birth. Abraham was 100 when Isaac was born. And then, Sarah herself was 89. Now, God came to him and began to tell him, look, I'm going, to, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you a son. And, and I want you to, I'm going to make you a father of nations. And then God told Luke, now, even as Sarah, Sarah, you're going to change her name from Sarai to Sarah. 
And Abraham laughed too. Abraham, that was first of all where Abraham laughed. Abraham laughed. <laughs> Kai, where did I, Abraham, where did these jokers came from? Oh. He was laughing at God. He laughed. And God said, okay, for laughing, the name of that song will be called laughter. <laughs> That's Isaac. For laughing at me, the name will be laughter. Now, you see, the Abraham didn't believe. Abraham said, look, leave this thing you are saying first. I have uh, Ishmael. Let Ishmael leave. Let's, <laughs> let Ishmael leave. God said, no, I understand Ishmael. But I'm saying that you are going to bring forth one that will come from Sarah. This is when God came. Then the season of visitation now came. How come they did not take him when God showed up as God? When God showed up as God, it was just promises. Then later on, God now came in the form of three men. And Abraham, having the spiritual eye, could discern that these were no ordinary men. These were no ordinary people. He ran to them. But, you know, and they were not even angels. Because you know why? Angels don't receive worship from men. They were not angels. So, when he, he bowed, he collected the thing, he's God. That's why I made you. Thank you, thank you. Maybe. <laughs> but you see, for angels, would have said, no, 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 no. Ah, we have been sent to serve you. You are not to bow down to me. But this one, God. And, you know, the point here is that he had the discernment. Will you discern, will you be discerning enough to know your appointed time? And then, you also know what to do to trigger your season. Abraham, descend this, serve them something, and they ate. And they now said, now, this one is no more promise now. Just by this time next year. According to the time of life. You know, because Abraham had had his encounter with God. So this time around, he didn't laugh. It was not the wife who wasn't there that laughed. So we began to discuss the things, the signs. We said, burdens. I'm, I'm just, I'm not going to be, I won't be able to, you know, say burdens. Just take, take the note. Burdens, and then we also talked about when you begin to have a pool to pray. Do you remember that? When you have what? A pool to pray. Then thirdly, we also talked about excitement. Joy breaking out in your spirit. And we talked about that. Okay, but I'm not going to go into that. Now, there, is, there are two things I will try to discuss quickly and then we'll try to look at the things you have to do because it's not enough to know that it's your season. If you know it's your season and you don't do certain things, you can abort that pregnancy. You can abort that season. So, there is this other one that they call the knowing. Knowing. Knowing of the spirit. You just, knowing of the spirit. Now, give us John chapter 13. 1 to 4. Quickly, John chapter 13, 1 to 4. The knowing of the spirit. The knowing of your spirit. The knowing of your spirit. John chapter 13, 1 to 4. Thank you. Now, before the feast of, of Pas Passover, when Jesus knew, Jesus did what? Jesus did what? Knew that his hour was what? Come. Did you see that? He knew. How did he know? He read it from the Bible. How did he know? CNN announced, announced it on air and said, Oh, Jesus, it's time for you to be crucified. Knew, he knew. That means there was that knowing of the spirit that his time, his hour was come that he should depart out of this world unto the Father. Having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Okay, 
Go ahead. And supper being ended, the devil, having now put in the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simeon's son, to betray him. Quickly, media, can you help me? To fall. We're reading to fall. Jesus, knowing, did you see that again? Jesus, what? Knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, that he was come from the Father and went to the Father. I wish that we'll have time to. You see, there is something understanding. Now, let's read verse 4. Then I will, I will still recap this. I've been saying this issue of understanding. He rises from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. Now, we're not going to read any further now. What happened that he now began to wash the feet of his what? Disciples. And you know, that capacity to wash the feet of his disciples came from an understanding. Never you forget. I said, an understanding will give you a posture. Jesus was able to serve because there was an understanding of who, where he's coming from, who he is, and where he's going to. You see, the things you do and don't do is a function of your understanding. You know, pride is a function of understanding. But you are understanding the wrong thing. But you see, if you understand that there is nothing you have in this world that was not given to you, it will give you a posture of humility. You see, if you understand that you are not better than the mad person out there, <laughs> you are not better than the people who are in Avis. You don't know that you could have been in, be living in Avis. Make no mistake about it. Some of you, some of the people that are in Avis, they didn't go through half of the thing that you went through and you are standing and you are not in Avis. <laughs> you are not aware. That you could have been the one who is in, oh, did, oh, how many of you have, you've gone to have this, you see those people, some of them, you are, you are wondering if they are human beings. You see, is, is that, under, is it still understanding? Let me give you an, another thing now. The reason why you are not going for evangelism is because you still lack understanding. There is an understanding you lack. You see, there is an understanding you will have. It will set you on, to, it will boot passion for souls in your heart. It's understanding. Jesus knowing. Now, that, this is a big digression, but let me go back to the real thing that we're talking about. The knowing of the spirit. There is something they call the knowing of the spirit. And that knowing of the spirit comes from the Greek word ginosko. You see, when there is, when there is, there are several kinds of knowledge, knowing, you know, you have the one they call idol. You know, in Greek, Greek, one word can have several meanings. Idol. Idol has to do with scientific knowledge. But when we're talking about ginosko, ginosko is not scientific knowledge. It is to be aware. It is an awareness to come to know, to get a knowledge or, or perception. Now, see, give us that, that place in Amplify. John chapter 13, verse 1. Give us the Amplify. Oh, glory to Jesus. Now, now, therefore, the Passover feast began. Jesus knew, was fully aware. You see, there is an awareness that comes in your spirit for you, you just, it's not something that you were told. It's not something that you were taught. You are just aware. Now, now let, me, let me give you an example. How do you know that you are, you are male? Huh? You just know. Okay. How do you know that you are male? Yeah? You know how. You can't really explain it. <laughs> okay. Let me ask a, a female. How do you know that you are female? You know. I thought it's by all these things. The knowing of, 
No. Which one is knowing of the spirit? I disagree with you. <laughs> you don't need spirit to know that you are. How do you know that you are female? That you are see, if they carry this, transfer this uh, what's it called now? Wig and put on your hair. Why? See, it will not make you female. Let them paint you. You know this, this makeup that when they make people up, you start looking for the person. <laughs> Have you ever seen that type of makeup? You are, you are looking for the person. When they tell you, oh, this is this, is, this one, you say, what? They give the person pointed nose. He that told the nose was round, but... The makeup will now make the nose. <laughs> okay, how do you know that you are Raphael? <laughs> well, I'm not taking the matter to another level now. How do you know? <laughs> do you know that many things you know are wrong? Okay, if I ask you, what is your date of birth? When were you born? Don't, eh? don't worry. We don't want to know your age. But whatever you say, how do you know you were born that day? <laughs> and you believe. Do you know whether it's true? <laughs> anyway, let me not go to the one that is that will turn your head. Your parents. <laughs> Should I go there? Let me go a little bit. Let me go. No, I will go. You will understand. It, it's just to help you to understand. How do you know that those people are your parents? Hey, I'm troubling people too much. <laughs> how do you know the people that, that are your parents now? How do you know they are your parents? They get, how, were you there? <laughs> Were you there? Were you there when you were born? You were not there. You were born. You were not there when you were born. <laughs> okay. Just in case you are wondering, ah, what kind of foolish question is Pastor asking? Okay, don't worry. Have you to realize people that believed all their life that some people were their parents? All their lives they believed until they were fifty. When the man was dying, he said, my picking. There's something that I want to tell you. We've been keeping this secret. <laughs> Your heart is jumping. Boom, boom, boom. I said, God, we just want to tell you that we are not the ones that gave birth to you. You've not seen that happen before. Oh, it's not Nigerian film, oh. Real life. You don't know there are many people that are adopted now. They are not aware that they were adopted. They are not. Okay, but I'm just trying to, but that's not my, that's beside the point. Now, we're talking about an awareness that comes not by mental exertion or what you were taught. You see, you see, these are the reasons why you need to be a very spiritual person. Because you see, Life is spiritual. And in the spirit, you need to pick impulses, signals. And then, those signals, you know, most signals need interpretation. Are you aware? In all fields, you will see signals. If, if doctors plug their gadget in your heart, boom. I don't know if they will have that, that type in Nigeria. Then you see a screen. You be seeing. You don't know the meaning. You don't even know a sign like that will show that this heart has is not working. Or that sign maybe that this heart is about to pack up. Now it takes the people who have been taught 
to now look at that sign and begin to interpret and tell you there is a sign. You see, that's why you can't afford to be carnal. Oftentimes there are signs in the spirit we are not able to decode. Hi. When you see uh, the son of Nebuchadnezzar, one day he was having fun. And he said, Kai, oh, oh, this is, we're having good time. Now, the good, the madness, he was, you know at times, I've told you there are two seasons in your life to be careful. When you are sad and when you are excited. Because the devil can hijack those two moments. Are we together? Come on, are we together? You know you can be excited and start doing foolish things. Fully, that's you lose senses. If so, you must when you are doing those things, either you are depressed or excited, you need to be very careful. So this man was so excited that he forgot himself and said, "Kai, can you go and bring those vessels that we collected from the Jews? Bring it. Let's use it and drink. <laughs> let's use it and, and drink wine." And as they were drinking the wine, a hand appeared and began to write. Men, men, men. Hi. The thing tormented him. And he was looking, who? How do we, who will interpret this, this signal? And I think the queen said, look, there is a man. <laughs> he, said, he said, have you forgotten there is a man during your father's reign? Describe, he said, he had, I, I, I wish I could get that. There's a way he quantified the Daniel's level of understanding. He said he can unravel this mystery. And when Daniel came and looked at him, I said, look, how can hand write, how do you, where is balance? He read the thing and I said, look, you have been weighed in a balance. And you have been found wanting. They've, he, doesn't that tell you that each time God weighs us in the balance? There are some of the things you do, God puts you in the balance, it disqualifies you from certain things. Weighed in the balance and you are reading minus kg in the spirit. Some of you, you are, you are big physically, but in the spirit, you have no weight. But that's just food for thought. Now, and he even told him what to do. He should renounce wickedness and embrace righteousness. And then the man just discarded the thing. That same night, he was invaded and they were killed. Now, we're talking about this knowing. There's this, you see, if your spirit is alive. Now, can, can I tell you this? There are times you meet people, you just know that you shouldn't meet, be going with this person. If your spirit is alive, in fact, at times you you will be you will meet somebody and you'll be having an unease and you don't know the meaning. But see, there are times you also wake up, you want you have scheduled a a journey, and you wake up with the knowing that you shouldn't make that journey. You see, no matter how important you think that journey is, can you keep that? Just see, the best thing for you to do is to begin to pray. There is a there is a knowing. Now, let me tell you, those of you that are married, you are, if you are not married, when you want to marry and you, the, your wedding day, you wake up. <laughs> Two ways. You wake up afraid. Not the one that fear that came because you have calculated the mind is living in one room. How am I going to cope? That one is carnality. Just march and go and attend the wedding. <laughs> Let them carry you home. You wake up and <laughs> fear. You know, these things may look very strange. But you see, these are the things you need to be taught things about the spirit. And this could be the difference between life and death. Like the story of the brother that I shared with you. There is a knowing, and that's why your spirit needs to be alive so that signals it can pick. Some of you are dead. You, the, your spirit man is not alive. And part of the reason why your spirit man is not alive, the things that sustain the spirit, you don't give it to them. No prayer, no word, no meditation. Even when you are, we are seeing you bodily, you are, no, you are even in service, but you are not in service. 
It's your body that we're, it's your head that we're seeing shining. But the real you is not here. It's your mouth that is red that we're seeing. With your makeup. But the real you is, didn't come. So nothing to keep you are, you see, because if you are dead, if you are dead, now let me give you this, uh, this now, you know that there are signals moving. What is, why this sweet bag is able to walk is because there is a connection and is able to pass, transmit signal from there to here and from there to another direction. Now, if this, this cord or cable is dead, you can be plugged no signal. <laughs> we'll just be laboring in vain. So, you see, it is in your interest that your spirit man is alive. So that, okay, you know what the Bible says? Job 32 verse 8. Job 32 verse 8. Your spirit man, you need to pay attention to it. Please give us that quickly, 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 quickly. Job 32 verse 8. He said, there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the almighty give them what? Understanding. Can you give us another trans translation? Give us several translations. Let's look at it. There is a spirit in man. The bread of God. He said, but I, but I see, I was wrong. It is God's spirit in a person that breathed the, the breath of the almighty one that makes wise human insight possible. Now, you're you are seeing there are two, it's talking about the spirit of God able to breathe upon our spirit that makes human wisdom, insight possible. Can you give us another translation? Can you give us another translation, please? Okay. But it is the spirit in a man, the bread of the almighty, that gives him what? Understanding. Now, you see, if your spirit is not alive, and the spirit of God is breathing upon you, giving you signal, and the spirit is not alive, what becomes of you? The knowing, the knowing. The Bible says Jesus knew that his time has come. Will you be able to know when your time in a place has expired? Will you be able to decode when your season in the place where you are walking had elapsed? Can you help that one, that person sleeping? I, I don't even understand. The... <laughs> If you understand the things that we're saying today, you realize that one of the thing, worst things that you, are, you, are, you do to yourself is to be sleeping and not pay attention. You see, we have been taught, we have been made to believe in people just laying hands and praying for, will people be praying for you, be available with you all the time? We are talking about your spirit being able to pick up dangers and your opportune time. If I pray for you and your opportune time comes, you are not able to pick it. It will still not work. So that's what we're talking about. So that your spirit man will be alive. So that you can begin to pick up. You. There is a knowing. Now let me tell you this. I don't know if, if Dr. Leda told you the story of our... Okay, not yet. I wasn't there. But now, the, the reality is this. Do you realize, the first time I met her, there was a knowing. That is gnosko, not scientific knowledge. It wasn't the knowledge that came as a result of attraction and as a result of, there was that knowing. I just knew. And I told you last week, she wasn't my friend. We were not as I knew that I didn't go close to her. Brothers, let me tell you something. See, I need to tell you how to get what belongs to you. Because some of you, you spoil your, your proposal ahead of time. You just know tomorrow you go, 
can I, I want to marry you? How will you say, no, I will not. They don't do things like that. Some of you, you don't know, you, you lack understanding. <laughs> you, you are carrying carryover from the world. You carry over. That you just see somebody you like, the person you approach and say, hello, babe. <laughs> it, it doesn't work like that in this kingdom. You will prolong your proposal. It's one of the, it's one of the ways to prolong your proposal. You say, ah, I've been telling her for 10 years. You know, because you, you got the thing wrong. You're just greeting the sister. People are meeting for the first time. You just greet. Then you say, can I see you after service? Okay, you could not meet. And the next thing you are not telling them, Kai, I just saw you. Can we journey in life together? The person would think that you, your head, something is wrong. Something is jamming in your head. There is no spirit that will move that person to agree. You know, in fact, it will be a battle with the spirit of God. Go ahead, sisters. Communicators, thou, I. Even when the people know that it is a spirit, of, they will battle. You say, God, are you sure this boy that he said is not correct? How can you see somebody today and you are proposing to the person the same day? Something is touching his head. It's the Holy Spirit that will need to help the person over time to agree to you. He will, see, they don't do things like that. Don't worry, we'll teach you people. Or some of you, you are proposing to three people at the same time, you are confused, confused, confusion. You see, if this one if this one no agree, this one will agree. If this one, but this is the main one. But in case I will have this one, too, you are confused. You, it's confusion that is worrying you. And that's why you need, to, your spirit man needs to be alive. Do you know there were people that I met and as I desired, oh, to, and you just know this is not your wife. I know, you know what that thing, it will save you from, from emotional hangover. Back. <laughs> Some of you have wasted your emotional resources. <laughs> Converting a garden that is not your own. When you finish converting, cultivating it, another person will take over. The, you just <laughs> cultivate it very well for the owner. The owner will just come. The, the original owner will come and harvest. You have, you have poured, poured, poured prayer. Cuckoo, caca, cuckoo, caca. <laughs> poured prayer, poured money, poured uh, <laughs> all manner of things. Only at the end of the day to discover that you have wasted your... You see, you see why you need to be alive? That heart, they are smashing from here to there. <laughs> you can save yourself trouble. You see, one of the worst, the best things that can happen to you is to define, know the purpose of any relationship. So, but these things can come by the knowing. Jesus, the Bible says, he knew, he knew, he knew. The no school, the spirit of God will just, you see, you can't, I can't, you can't explain it because it doesn't come by, there is no, you, you can't say that is one plus one equals to two. There, there is just the knowing, your spirit just knows this is the thing to do. You know what the Bible says? It says, you will hear a voice from behind that will say, this is the way. Your spirit man needs to be alive because, you see, it can begin to pick. You just know. You just know. You just know you should leave this place now. It's no voice. You just know. You just know that you should be in this place at this point in time. You just know. There's a knowing of the spirit. It, 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 it's, it's, it's like a, 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 a light that comes up. It's just like the, the description I can give you is it, like, you know, when Bob comes on. Do you understand? Boom, awareness. You just become aware. Do you know that you can be in a relationship and wake up with that awareness that you are in the wrong place? And it will be in your interest to respond to that knowing. The knowing of the spirit. And let me tell you this, like I told you, and you need to understand this. Eh? This knowing, they don't calculate it. Don't look at, judge it by what is happening around you. 
Everything may look good and you wake up with the knowing that it's time to leave this location. Leave. You wake up with a knowing that you are supposed to be to travel to this and it's not in your agenda. It may not even make sense. Just respond to your knowing. The Bible says the spirit of the Lord, there is a spirit in man. And the breath of the almighty gives him understanding. There's another place he talk about that, that the spirit of, of, of man is a, is a candle and the spirit of God lights, he lights, he lights that knowing, knowing, knowing. And how we need that discernment in this time and age. <laughs> Can I tell you this? That knowing can also come that you carry your money to go and buy something. You just realize that there is a knowing not to buy that thing. And you don't even know the reason why you are not going to buy, you shouldn't buy that thing. You have planned, you have saved. And there is a knowing not to buy that thing. Go home. Have it ever happened to you before that you wanted to buy something and there was a knowing and you didn't buy it and later something came up and an emergency now came up and you realize that this money was needed for this thing and if you had bought those things, bought, bought that thing, you would have been stranded. You see, the Spirit of God is so, in, 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 so interested in every detail of your life. You see, the truth is that we don't know the treasure, the resources that we have in the Holy Ghost. We don't know the resource called the Holy Ghost. And I'm teaching you how the Holy Ghost works. Partners with your spirit to enter into your season. Or to avoid the season that the devil is planning for you. The knowing of the spirit. The knowing of the spirit. The knowing of the spirit. Hi, oh Jesus. Now can I tell you this? In the year 2021 that we're going, you will need it more than anything. It will be risky to be normal next year. It's going to be risky to depend on your five senses in the year that we're going into. It's, it's going to be your, you will be a risk, you'll be a danger waiting to happen. The senses from the spirit, and these are the things I'm telling you, burdens to pray, excitement, knowing of the spirit. Knowing of the spirit. Maybe it's time people can, but I'm just, this is just one of the, see, someone who is not alive in the spirit, what I'm saying, you may not understand it and I don't know how else to explain it to you. It, because it has to be by experience. You, you wake up with a knowing. Then it will be so alive in inside you. In fact, the circumstances may not even be speaking that. Now, how do you also know your, your season? I, I'll just run, I'll just mention that and then because I think I'll now go into a little bit of what to do, what to do, what to do. Now, you see, you can also know your season by prophecy. Okay? Now, let me just get, give you these scriptures. You go read them. For the want of time, prophecy, prophecy, First Peter one ten, Jude chapter one verse fourteen, First Timothy four fourteen, prophecy. Okay, now it's possible somebody could prophesy about a new season, just like you know, even though we have known, but the prophecy came, even from some of our guests talking about a new season. Okay. You know, somebody can tell you about a season that is upon you. Probably you, you are not aware. But you see, that's why you need to be alive in the spirit. Because most times, what God will be, does is that to confirm what he already told you. But oftentimes, we are not alive. So, another person can bring that spiritual information to you. That this is what God is, 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 is wants to do with you about a particular season. So you could, you could come, that kind, you could come. But see, let me tell you this. That somebody prophesy most times, even when it is real, does not necessarily mean that it's going to come to pass. How many of you, have, have they not told you something? That, and the truth is that not necessarily because the person lied, but because you, you went to sleep. Because without knowing what to do with prophecy. If it, see, eh, let me tell you this. 
when you hear prophecy on your life, the first thing is not to rejoice. I don't know. I, I may be wrong, but, but why I'm saying this is this. You see, when the worst thing, I don't, I don't say it's the worst thing, but you see, when they verbalize a prophecy, you hear, the devil hears, you are in trouble. <laughs> you are, it's better that a prophecy was not verbalized. Because the devil may not know details, but when the prophecy now begins to give details, your life, you see, it doesn't call for sleeping. But you see, the problem is that we, we just get excited. Oh! Then after the thing didn't come to me, say, nah, it's like that person, <laughs> you war with prophecies. Did, have you seen some prophecies that didn't come to pass in your life? Or they have lingered. They have delayed. Because you have been sleeping on those prophecies. You know, you carried your Bible, say they prophesy. You, even where you wrote it and put it under your pillow and you are sleeping on top of the prophecy. It, that's not how they fulfill. You know, somebody said uh, uh, standing on the word of God is you put the Bible down and climb on top of it. I'm standing on the word of God. That's not how to stand on the word of God. You can stand on that and the devil will kill you. See, now, this is the core of the message now. What is your responsibility if you discern that your season has come. You see, your discerning that your season has come comes with a responsibility. And that's what we're going to be looking at. But, but well, I'll, I'll just give you one. You see, you know what, I, like I said before, when a woman gets pregnant, her life changes. <laughs> her wardrobe, in fact, she doesn't, you see, one of the things a pregnant woman should not be doing is to climb Bokada. <laughs> Especially in Nigeria. Eh? You know why? Because, there, you see, there's something about pregnancy. Pregnancy changes your lifestyle. You, you can't be a normal person when you get pregnant. When you begin to realize that your season has come, if you continue with a normal life, that pregnancy may be aborted. Do you realize that when people get pregnant, even their food will, will change? Their wardrobe, what they scared that they were that was sizing them before, will stop, will no longer. Then a time will come. It's only few people that have, have been able to see that master did that they were still wearing high heel. Eh? <laughs> have you? Hey, your life changes. Do you know there are some pregnant women where they derive satisfaction is closer to the toilet. You know, I hope there's nobody like that. <laughs> they start craving from dangerous things. Your wife can wake you up by 11 p.m. and say, what I want to eat now is quilly, 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 quilly. <laughs> say, honey, quilly, quilly, now or never. <laughs> and you know, you can run to Nasarawa State by 11 p.m. and bring the quilly, quilly and come. He say, no, I don't want to eat it again. <laughs> hey, Hello. Where are those up? <laughs> the people that, they can crave for things. Hi. Okoho. Okoho soup. And I'm not aware of Okoho soup. They had to import Okoho soup from Otubo. Ogono. Power. <laughs> you see, now, let me tell you this. One thing about, um, let me run through, list these things, and then later we'll take them one after the other. Do you realize that when uh, Samson's mom was pregnant, they said, look, now this person is a destiny child. There are things that will not pass through your lips again. 
Do you also know that even when you become pregnant, even your company, there are in places where you are not supposed to be found. That was why then when we were going for harvest, we, we asked all our, because that child can become ganja man. <laughs> or, or the thing that, <laughs> you don't see, see your baby come out, the first word will be ganja. <laughs> Because every Friday he has been <laughs> inhaling ganja. <laughs> or it can even affect something. Just You see, there are things you are not supposed to take. Now, we will we'll look at those things in details. Do you also know when you are pregnant, like we talk about company. Now, one of the things that, first of all, prayer, company, preparation, instructions. These are the things. Now, you see, whenever your season, you begin to sense your seasons, one of the first things to do is to respond to prayer. Prayer is, should be your first response. When you, there is a burden, when there is an excitement, when there is prophecy, <laughs> when you hear prophet, when they prophesy to you, accurate prophecy, and say, look, I see God visiting you next year. After shouting amen, Start fasting and prayer. If not, that message may come. Instead of visitation, you have gone back. And it's not because that prophecy is a lie, but because, you see, it, it's one of the ways, you see Jesus, that was how he responded. When he realized that his time has come, Jesus responded by going to where? Gethsemane. He went to pray. He said, there was this agony. He began to pray. And you see, if it is agony, until that there is a lift of that agony, don't stop praying. That means your prayer has not handled the thing yet. Did you see Jesus? He went three times. It was when the third time, he finished the third time, the thing has, the thing, he said, oh, now we are ready. He said, wake up, let's go. You see, because you see, when you begin to pray, you are equipped. Like I told you, there are things you must go through. You are equipped to be able to face them. So when Jesus knew that he was fu fully equipped, he was ready and said, look, we are ready. I'm ready. Let's wake up. Let's go. So until there is a lift, the first thing to do is prayer. Prayer. We may talk about it more next week. Not next week now. Now, you know, another thing to do when you receive, when you see your season has come, you change your company. Your company is important. Now, let me give you an example. You see, when Mary, the mother of Jesus, you can find that in Luke chapter 1, 27 to 45. When she became pregnant, and you know, her own pregnancy was like a very strange one. It was not, you know, you know, there are things that are, there are actually prophecies that you must know the type of people you share them with. Because there are people you share that, that idea, they were bought. So, you know what happened? Mary went to meet another woman who had had a strange experience too. Mary went to meet Elizabeth, somebody who had passed the menopause and was visited by an angel again. And by the time she arrived, the Bible says, when Elizabeth saw her, the Spirit of God came upon, John the Baptist became baptized in the Holy Ghost. When he saw, he said, as I heard the sound of the voice of my Lord, the Spirit in the baby in my womb began to leap. You need to meet people who will make the baby in your womb to leap. You need to locate such companies. Such companies that will make the vision you have to resonate, resonate, resonate. People that will, that will tell you you are capable, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You see, when your season comes, you need to select your company. Even inside the church, you need to select your company. You need to begin to meet with people who can begin to see possibilities. He said, blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance of that thing with the mouth of the Lord has spoken. You see, when you become pregnant, you need to be careful. Because pregnancy does not equal to delivery. Company.
company, 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 company. I think we will just stop at this point. <laughs> you see, you see, let me tell you, when you are pregnant physically, you need to select. You see, some people, you know, especially in Nigeria, everybody is Dr. Igble. Igble. I don't even know what that means. But, <laughs> you see, they will prescribe many things. Eh? They say drink hot water. Drink bubo reset. Drink. He said, when you are pregnant, you should be jumping like frog every morning. You see, you just see how everybody becomes a doctor. Consultant. They will just be telling you all manner of things. In fact, they will even say, don't mind the doctor. That thing they are saying, you should don't. You see, you become a fool to leave a doctor and listen to carpenter when you are pregnant. But that's what happens to us. You, you are pregnant and you go to meet carpenter for diagnosis. You are holding what carpenter, carpenter's wife told you. You exalt carpenter's wife's this and above your consultants. Do you know how many people that have lost their pregnancy? You know how many people that, that have gone to the hospital and, and doctor is telling them this is what you are to do. Madam, you know, when my wife will be telling me that story, some stories like this, in fact, I will hear her say, Madam, Madam, Madam. In fact, there are even some people that pastors themselves have helped to cripple their pregnancy. Now, can I tell you this? I think we need to, you see, some of you think that CS is de- demonic. Some of you are thinking, you they say, you are going to do CS, say, God for me, God for me. Who, who told you if you do CS that, Then they will not say the person should come for prayer and they will surround the person. I'm not saying you can be, dec- but you see, it doesn't, you, see, you, un- you need understanding. You know, many people have died like that. You see, oftentimes people don't even understand faith. You don't even understand faith and you are faithing something that, and when there is no understanding of faith. Your company must change when you know that your season is upon you. Now, let me give you an example. If you are in this church, you are company with somebody, they are saying, pray, pray, let's come and pray. And the person is saying, this, 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 they are disturbing us too. The person is discouraging you from coming to pray in this our season of prayer. Your pregnancy, you are drinking something that will abort it. You should, you should go for somebody who will encourage you when you are pregnant, your company, you need to go, to go to people who have been able to experience the hand of God. Because what Mary was expecting, somebody else had already experienced it. Elizabeth. And that was why she was able to face that season of her life. Can you bow down your heads as we pray? Next week, we're going to continue because there are, there are responsibilities. It's not enough to know your season. Your knowing your season requires you begin to pray more than usual. <laughs> now, can I tell you this? I understand, though. I understand. You see, one of the things that will happen to you, your body will be reacting. The devil wants to use your body against you. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Hey, your body will be tired. Your body will be tired. Hey, when your season is upon you and you need to pray, in fact, you pray, pray, before a time will come, your body will start reacting. Weakness. You start feeling headache. You, ah, you, you know, recently, the thing eh, there, was it, ah, my head, it was doing, so I started sleeping. I was trying to sleep, to sleep, to when I did that in one, two, three days, the other, the other day I woke up again, my head was doing like this. I said, this thing, eh, meet me in the parlor. <laughs> because now that's it. Well, I like pray. I said, meet me in the, I've slept, meet me in the parlor. My destiny is at stake. <laughs> you see, when this season, there, there is a season that is upon us. One of the things that the devil wants to do is attack your health because he knows when you don't pray, you will, when you are sick, you will not be able to. Don't yield to that sickness. Oh. 
Hey, sickness is a choice. So. Uh, I'm telling you reality. But you see, the devil knows that if you can align with what God wants to do, nothing can stop what God wants to do in your life. Haven't you gone around this mountain for so long? Won't, won't you take your destiny seriously? You see, you don't even understand what happens when you begin to pray the way you ought to pray. Things will begin, channel of your spirit will begin to open. Doors will begin to open. God will, you see, let me tell you this. Nobody can give you anything except God touches the person's heart. Make no mistake about it. And how honorable will you be? Will it be when you didn't ask for something and somebody said, God told me to give you this? And you are giving with dignity. But you see, it, there is a pressing that is required to get into that dimension of life. And when you begin to see these signals, it is time to pray like never before. It is time to begin to schedule fastings. It is time to begin to pray. It's time to begin to pray. You know, pressing. It is time because you are a pregnant woman. Pregnancy is not equal to delivery. A woman, when she is in labor, it is because her time has come. And if your time has come, it calls for traveling. Until Zion travels, she will not bring forth her male child. It takes traveling to bring out your male child. Come on, is somebody ready to pray this morning to receive grace to travel? God is saying that it's a season upon us. And when God is saying the season is upon us, it's not upon the building. It's upon the individuals. It's a season of prayer to stand in the gap when you begin to see heaviness. Is it not because God is calling attention to your priestly ministry? God, he needs your cooperation. He needs your cooperation. He needs your partnership to bring to pass the things he has said concerning you. God alone cannot do it. He needs your partnership. He needs your spirit so that you can even begin to pick the right people to meet. The right people to accompany with you. The right people, the right people, the right people to ask for certain things. The candle of the Lord. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Lord, light my spirit. It takes a man that a prayer man for the candle of your spirit to be to be to be usable, to be lightable, to be lightable. The spirit of the man is a candle of the Lord. The spirit of a man is a candle of the Lord. It takes a prayer man. A prayer man is a lightable person. A prayer man is a lightable person. Is that man that can begin to see signals from the spirit? Is that man that can begin to read the signals from the computer of heaven? You can begin to decode what to do, where to go, where not to go. Somebody go ahead and pray. This is not a time to be a weakling spiritually. This is not a season. A season is upon us. A season is upon us. Now hear this. Hear this. Hear this. Hear this. Hear this. Now I'm going to talk about it after next week. You see, one of the things that happens when you become pregnant is that you begin to live by instructions. That's another thing that happens. When you go, you go for antenatal. Go for those things. They check you. The doctors will check you and begin to prescribe, give you instructions, things to do things to do. See, now when you become, your season comes. Dr. Jesus, through the Holy Ghost, will begin to give you instructions. Now let me tell you this. But do you know how to activate those instructions? It is in the place of prayer. <laughs> it is prayer that will make you to be in a place where you begin to hear instructions. You see, when you are pregnant, you look away from another pregnant woman. <laughs> when, you 
when you are pregnant, you walk with your own doctor's prescription. Because you see, the doctor will check your body and give you your own instruction. Maybe there are things they have seen. A tendency for high BP. Tendency for some things, so they give you. So, higher. See, and until you begin to come to a place where you begin to pray, that your candle, he said the spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord. Where your candle is lightable, 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 lightable. It is a prayer man that has a lightable spirit. <laughs> Can you pray one more time? Now, I want you to come against everything that is making you to be prayerless. <laughs> Weakness of the body. <laughs> For some people, it's you, you, you stay, you just, you can't even. Can you come against those things now? Can you come against those things now? With venom, with, with, hey. The violent taken it by force. Can you violate? Because that thing is trying to stop your spirit from being lightable. Students, hear me. Your spirit can be lightable that the spirit will guide you on where to read for your exams. Your spirit can become lightable. All the students, hear me. Your spirit can become lightable. That the Holy Ghost begin to guide you where to read during for your exams. That's why at times, when you, before you read, you can begin to speak in tongues. You can you can begin to speak in tongues. Certain topics will begin to come to your spirit. He said, God has given to us everything that pertains to life and godliness. The Holy Ghost is a compendium of all the things you need for life and godliness. That resource, that resource, prayer is not for prayer warriors. Prayer is for people who desire to fulfill destiny. Prayer is for people who desire not to miss their season. One of the ways to respond to the impressions, the pulses of the spirit, you respond through prayer. Because it's in prayer you begin to decode. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now let's, let, let's, one more, we're going to pray this prayer one more time. <laughs> Please, if you are not praying, pray. Nobody can pray for you better than the way you pray for yourself. Hey. Now let me tell you what prayer does. You see, it's not enough to know your season. You can begin to have burdens, have excitement, have uh, those things. But you know what prayer does is this. Prayer will help you to interpret those pulses. It's as you begin to yield to prayer. You now begin to understand the pulses of the spirit. Is somebody ready to pray one more time? The things that have made my, that have made my spirit not to be lightable, lightable, unaccessible to the spirit. Maybe the cable is dead. Maybe the cable is caught somewhere and signals can't, I can't receive signal. Some of you, you have been a Christian for five years. What we are saying you is strange. It's strange to you. you have, that means you have not been serious with your Christian life. Can you pray? Can you pray? Can you pray? This thing we are talking about is not realm for pastors. It's something you can use in your business. It's something you can use in your workplace. It can't fail. It can't fail. Laying of hand can fail. But this thing I'm telling you cannot fail. Jesus, Jesus, sweet Holy Spirit, thank you, Lord Jesus. Lift up your hands wherever you are. 
Lift up your hands wherever you are. Lift up your hands wherever you are. Ah, I wanted to receive this prayer. Now, before I forget, while I was preparing for this meeting, there were two persons, somebody that has been having a migraine headache. The headache, a headache that has been, that have been persistent. There is healing in the house for you today. If you if you are in that category, if you're that person, well, you this there is a headache, it has persisted. Can I see your hand? There's healing for you. There's healing for you in the house. I take authority over that spirit of infirmity in the name of Jesus Christ. I command that migraine, that headache, that demonic headache to go now in the name of Jesus. You are healed in Jesus' name. You will look for the headache. You can find it. You can check yourself now. Now, I also receive a word for some persons whose menses, who are having challenges with their menses. I pray for you wherever you are right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that devil of darkness. Right now, I take authority. Lose your grip over those lives. And I speak for the healing. Healing even to the very source. Not just that your period will come. The cause of that ordeal is handled as well. And I command your body to walk according to specification. To, to work according to specification. Factory reset. Come on. In the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Now everybody under the sound of my voice. Every other healing. Even if you're, this, this once your, your, your own case was not called. Wherever you are. You are healed in the name of Jesus Christ. You are healed in the name of Jesus Christ. That ulcer is gone in the name of Jesus that stomach upset is gone in the name of Jesus. Eleko palia. That back pain in the name of Jesus. You are healed in the name of Jesus.